Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary and my fellow colleagues and distinguished guests, uh, it's an incredible honor for me to be able to serve the residents of the 84th District and to address you today. We have heard the nomination in the second of the leadership of the General Assembly, and I felt compelled to give remarks to the leadership as a whole for my expectations of the 100th General Assembly going forward. Please bear in mind, it will only be five minutes because I believe that we have a lot to do today. As all of you, the state of Illinois is near and dear to my heart. Illinois was there for me after my honorable discharge from the Marines when I needed it. I got an unbelievable education from Northern Illinois University, which is a publicly funded university. And I believe in our grant system because I received an Illinois Veterans Grant and I received a MAT grant. These programs are in peril today, and I would beseech you that we need to start focusing on what is happening to our state of Illinois. I met my husband at Northern Illinois University. He's an Army veteran, so we are a veteran couple. We are an NIU couple, Illinois couple, and that was 20 years ago. When we were young, we were promised that a good education, and when you work hard, you move up in life. Hard work pays off, and that's what Illinois is founded on. Hard work paying off. However, when I talk to residents in my district, they are average, middle-class working people, working hard, and they find that they continue to work hard, and they continue to work hard, and due to the situation in the state of Illinois today, it's not paying off, and they continue to struggle. We are voted to be a public servant, we are voted to do a public servant job. We are here to look out for the disabled, the frail elderly, the children, the victims of violence, the college students, and our veterans. But we have a budget impasse that seems just really an exercise in stubbornness that needs to end. So today we are talking about the leadership going forward. We are going to vote on Speaker of the House. There's one individual nominated from the Democratic Caucus. That's where my vote will go. But I felt compelled to make a statement for all the leadership, even the leadership from the Republican Caucus, that we have to do better than what we have been doing the past two years. I personally am disgusted we do not have a budget for two years. In 200 years, is going to be this year. In 198 of those years, we've had a budget. It can be done. I am appalled, personally, by the backroom deals that I have seen in the two years, secret committee meetings, of which I was not even told who my colleagues were on these meetings, and private working groups, of which I am not invited to. It is clear to me a meeting of just the governor and four people in a room has not worked in the last two years, and we need to do something different because we cannot afford to have the state of Illinois go off a cliff. We deserve to serve our people. <clears throat> so I believe democracy is always best in the public and should be held up to public comments, and our ideas should be given a true debate. If we shine the light of day on our deliberations, I believe that what has been said here today about compromise and working together will happen. To restore trust, we should all do our jobs in public. And to be quite honest, you can view it at home on the internet too. We're pretty open. So I believe that we need to trust in the people of Illinois and to engage them in the next two years of this General Assembly. And we can do that through what is truly compromise and collaboration. Compromise and collaboration to make sure legitimate injured workers are taken care of and our businesses are taken care of. Through comp true compromise and collaboration, we can make sure that we have responsible and reliable school funding for our children. And that has to go hand in hand with true and legitimate property tax relief. I believe, and I'm a product of, a good university and college student which will contribute to a competitive and educated workforce, and we need to empower the people and not unelected lobbyists and bureaucrats. 
I believe that we must stop backroom deals, secret committee meetings, and private working groups. And that will lead us to an end of the budget impasse so that we can ensure the health, safety, and welfare of all our residents and that we can do our job and take care of the frail elderly, the children, the disabled, the victims of violence, the college students, and my fellow veterans. I am addressing the leadership as a whole because this is not the job of one person. This is the job of all of us that we must embrace and work forward. And so therefore, I will do my job on the House of Representative floor, as will my colleagues, because we are all responsible to the people of Illinois. We are voted into office to be the voice for those without one. Regular people deserved a say on how these crucial decisions are made. And we must support our residents, our neighborhoods, the state of Illinois, our constituents, and our family. Therefore, I am asking two simple things. A return to an open and transparent government and an end to the budget impasse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Or thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you.